As K-dramas have become internationally popular, it has now become a goldmine for investors, especially between international streaming services of China and the United States. This may sound like great news for South Korean producers and fans, but the growing Chinese influence in the Korean entertainment industry is not being very welcomed by the public. One of the main causes of the unwelcome is the Chinese ban on South Korean content. It began as an economic retaliation in 2016 when South Korea went against China's wishes and introduced the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, also known as THAAD, from the United States. Ever since then, K-drama, K-pop, and even Korean celebrities were banned and chased out of China. This formed anti-Chinese sentiments among the Korean public, which worsened when China decided to lay claims to South Korean traditions such as kimchi, hanbok, and kat. Despite this ban, just as Netflix had invested large amounts of capital in producing successful Korean dramas, Chinese companies are doing the same. Just last year, Tencent has invested $91.1 million in JTBC Studio. Of course, with the increase in production costs and the decrease in local investments due to COVID-19, huge foreign investment became a must for drama production. But as Chinese investments grow larger, so does the possibility of their interference. Already, several dramas have received much backlash for promoting Chinese products that seem out of place within the scene settings, disrupting viewers' concentrations. In TVN's True Beauty, for example, characters are seen eating Chinese instant hot pot, and in Vincenzo, the characters eat Chinese bibimbap. In the case of bibimbap, it especially touches upon the sensitive issue of cultural appropriation since the traditional Korean food could be mistaken to be Chinese to the foreign audience. In the case of True Beauty, the backlash only ended with thousands of complaints on the drama's community site. But drama Chosun Exorcist, produced by YG Entertainment with two large Chinese shareholders, were forced to go off the air only after two episodes. They were accused of distorting Korean history and implementing Chinese-style sets and props within a drama set in Korea's Joseon Kingdom. The negative stance against China can also be found among K-pop fans of Korea. From NCT singing their song Back to You in Chinese, several Chinese idol members making posts celebrating the 100th anniversary of CCP, to idol supporting Xinjiang Cotton, the Korean public has continuously shown attitudes of repulsion towards K-pop idols involved with pro-China behavior. As there have been previous cases of Chinese members of K-pop groups abruptly leaving bands and continuing activities exclusively in China, many Koreans have lost faith towards the Chinese members. On the other hand, some defend these idols pointing out the lack of choice they have under the Chinese government's and public's pressure. Experts predict that the formula of including a Chinese member in a K-pop group might become unpredictable due to the current sentiment in Korea and political tension between the countries. Overall, in the industry already, there have been cases of refusing Chinese capital from TV producers to dramas. For example, Han dong Show Me The Money and Produce 101 producer turned down a 1 billion won contract deal with the Chinese agency. Also, another TV show based on a Chinese novel, Mr. Queen, is already facing backlash with more than 4,000 complaints over historical inaccuracies. While the K-pop industry and Korean broadcasting networks are starting to decline massed investments from Chinese companies, it is uncertain on how the media sphere will be affected following these measures. Will it deter the quality of content production due to lack of capital, or will it boost Korea's independent content identity?